Hello and welcome to this 35 lesson series on building apps for the Windows Phone 8 platform. My name is Bob Tabor and for the past 11 years I've been creating screencast training for Microsoft's developer centric tools and technologies both on Microsoft's web properties like here on Channel 9 and also on my own website www.learnvisualstudio.net. Now according to the title of this series we're going to target this training for absolute beginners and while that is definitely true I mean we're going to begin with the very basics of building apps you'll see that we move very quickly into utilizing new and advanced features on the Windows Phone 8 operating system as well. Now this series was made possible due in large part to the positive response from the original series, the Windows Phone 7 Development for Absolute Beginner series that we created a number of years ago. But we've redesigned this series completely. So if you watch that series in the past, you're not going to recognize a single thing in this new series. There will be a lot of new things to learn. Now before watching this series, you should already be familiar with C Sharp. And if you're not, then I would ask that you please put this series on the back burner for just a few days and instead head on over to Channel 9 C Sharp Fundamentals Development for Absolute Beginners. I designed that series for you, the absolute beginner to C Sharp, in mind. And at a minimum, you're going to need to get the basics of object oriented programming under your belt, things like classes and properties and methods and visibility modifiers and collections, especially generic collections. You'll need to have that under your belt before you attempt uh, this Windows Phone 8 development series. Now we approach this series uh, as a tutorial. In other words, we're going to teach how to build apps by walking through the steps required to build two full featured apps, one of which that we'll actually submit to the store. Now hopefully through this approach, you're going to see how big concepts fit together in a real scenario, a real life scenario, real apps that could be submitted to the store. I'm also going to build a number of tiny apps that will illustrate some small concept in hopes that it clarifies some fundamental ideas. Uh, I'm also going to cover things like the operating system and the hardware requirements, the software that you're going to need in order to install uh, to get started building uh, Windows Phone 8 apps how to get a developer license, how to design an app properly, how to submit the app to the store, and so on. So hopefully this is a great starting point as you get started. Now before I actually show you the two apps that we're going to build in this series, we need to do a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, on screen right now is, the, uh, is code that's loaded into Visual Studio. The videos are recorded in a high def format, 720p. And so they're crystal clear. So if you can't read the text on my screen right now, that could be because your internet connection can't handle streaming at a high bit rate. Your best option is to use the download link that's beneath every single video. So you can download in various formats and resolutions based on the target device that you want to watch these videos on. And that's true for every video on Channel 9. Next, in order to follow along, you're going to want to download the assets that are contained in a zip file. Now, I'm going to make sure that link is available on this page and every page where the videos are hosted. It'll contain the assets that you need to include in your projects, as well as the finished versions of the app, so that you can compare the code that I've written with the code that you're currently working on. And then finally, for the first time on Channel 9, I'm including a text and screenshot version of the videos. You'll find it posted below each video. Now while these are not necessarily word by word transcripts of, of what I'm going to say in the videos, they will cover the exact same material and they'll provide the code that I type in so that you can copy and paste it directly into your app. Okay? I'm providing this for those that have a hearing disability or for those who don't use English as their primary language. Also it should be helpful for reference purposes so that you don't have to go back through and watch the entire video again just to recall some idea or technique that I demonstrated in this series. Okay, so what are we going to build in this series? There's actually two apps, two full featured apps that we're going to build. Let me go ahead and run the first one in the emulator which we'll talk about uh, in one of the first lessons in this series. This first app is a soundboard app. First of all, it will allow you to move to different pivots to see lists of tiles, each one containing uh, 
WAV files that when you click on the tile, it'll play the appropriate sound. So for example, if we want to hear a duck quack and annoy uh, the animals in our household or our friends or our family, uh, we can hold up this app hit a button and uh, add it to the conversation. Okay, so that's the first app. Also, it has a neat feature. Uh, notice that we have a little app bar here and then we have a little about menu. We're gonna talk about adding that. We're gonna navigate to another page where we can actually record and play back the sounds uh, here then on our uh, on a special pivot that will contain just the tiles of the sounds that we've recorded using the device. Very cool. So let me stop that and then show you the second app, which is completely different. It's called Around Me, and what it allows you to do is wherever you're standing in the world, you can type in a topic. For example, I'm going to type in the topic um, food and then click the search button and now it'll go off to Flickr, the photo sharing websites uh, web services and it will show me all of the images that match that criteria and so then I can choose uh, it, it not just match the criteria of the search term but also photos that were taken in this very place where I'm standing with my phone right now so if I'm at the top as you can see here of the John Hancock Center in Chicago in the observatory I can see what photos other people have taken from that exact same place within a couple of uh, within a couple of meters of where I'm standing and uh, then I can use this multi selection list box here or list uh, group of list items and then click this little check mark and that will make it so that it will use those photos as the lock screen images on my phone. Okay, and so now every 30 minutes or so it will rotate those selected images as the background images for my phone. So we cover a lot of a lot of ground in these two apps talking about a lot of different functionality. Uh, you will learn a lot. Sometimes it'll be a little bit uh, advanced, so you'll have to put your thinking cap on, but I promise you this will be a great learning experience. Okay, and so just to give credit where credit is due here, while I'm the voice and the face that you'll be listening to and looking at for the next 11 hours if you choose to follow this all the way through, this effort was actually a collaboration between a number of parties. First and foremost, Clint Rutkiss of Channel 9 is the mastermind behind the two apps that I just demonstrated that we're going to be building in this series. I think we literally had a hundred email threads running about the various, various nuances of the code. He helped me get stuck a number of times. He was patient and very helpful and really deserves the lion's share of the credit for this series. Also, the Windows Phone team supported this effort and made it happen. I think that was due in large part to the warm reception that the previous version of this series received from you, the loyal Channel 9 viewer, so thank you very much. And then finally, Nokia and their developer ambassadors were very helpful in helping me secure the assets I needed in order to put this together. Nokia has stepped up and supported the Windows 8 platform and developers on the platform and I've been nothing but impressed with their passion for what they do. Check out the developer website www.dvlup short for develop.com they offer one-on-one -on -one support, frequent meetups, contests and prizes, and more to get developers like you and me and more engaged in thinking about working together to build this platform. You should register with their site in order to get started. And that brings me to this. I am in love with my Nokia Lumia 920. Without a doubt, this is the coolest device that I have ever owned. And trust me, I own several of the most popular devices on other platforms that are available on the market today. If you're interested in Windows Phone 8 development, it's not a requirement, but I think that you're really gonna to wanna to own one of these phones. It's not just a great developer test bed for the apps that you build, but it's also a great device. Uh, I've been given permission to tell you about my favorite feature, so let me tell you that first of all, it has an awesome camera purely from a user perspective here. In fact, my wife is constantly asking me to send her pics that I take with my phone. Our son just graduated high school a couple of weeks ago. And she asked me, hey, send me all those pics. Because her eye, 
I mean, her less capable foam just doesn't compare, especially in low light situations. Uh, it also has NFC, the near field communications capability, so I was able to share with my friends using a whole other platform, uh, a device on another platform, we were able to exchange information just by tapping our phones together. That was cool. Uh, also, uh, specifically for the Windows Phone 8 platform, or, uh, or Windows phones in general, is the ability to pin things to the start page. My favorite albums, my favorite websites that I visit every day, any apps that I want to use, I can pin them and get to them instantly without having to search through mountains of other apps I might have installed on my device. Uh, and then not only that, but some apps have live tiles. I'm sure you've heard that, that phrase before. I seek out apps that update the tiles on the start page with new information. And sometimes I do that so I won't have to open up the app. Sometimes I just do it because I want to spice up my, my start page uh, so I can see weather or my calendar or the countdown to my vacation right there on my start page. Okay, and here's my absolute favorite feature. I'm now charging my phone. Wireless charging is awesome. Yes, most pl uh, phones have the ability to buy a case that will allow you to do this, but it's built right into this phone. That is awesome. Also, I can do voice commands easily. I just hold down the start button on the face of the phone. Uh, so I can create OneNote to-do items that, that sync perfectly with SkyDrive and sync with my uh, OneNote on my desktop machine. Uh, I can also send a text message while I'm on the road and I, I don't have to take my hands off the wheel. All right, so there's, uh, there's also other cool things about this platform. First of all, it's growing. Uh, every time I do a demo uh, of my phone, I convert another user. I've got my family and my friends converted that this is going to be their next phone whenever their contract comes up for renewal. And I just read a great article, actually right here at this URL, uh, that uh, about the growth of the enterprise market for app builders. And that's really exciting to leverage this skill set and be able to build apps for large enterprises. And the best feature of all, at least in my opinion, is the fact that I can leverage my existing C Sharp and .NET and Windows runtime experience into building apps that I can carry around with me. Yeah, I suppose that if I wanted to create apps for another platform, I could spend a few weeks or months learning a new language, learning a new API, and so on. Or I could build apps that try to target all platforms but miss key new features unique to the Windows Phone 8 operating system. But this, this feels natural and easy, and so it's really fun. So if you're just getting started with Windows Phone 8 development, I'm sure that you'll soon share my excitement. This series, at least in my humble opinion, is one of the best ways to get up to speed quickly. So promise me this, if you follow along with this series and you're trying to build the apps as I'm building the apps, if you get stuck or something just doesn't make sense to you, please ask a question in the comments area at the very bottom of this page. Either Clint or I, or perhaps somebody else who's working through the same material, will try to help you get unstuck moving forward quickly. So let's go ahead and get started in the next lesson by setting up our environment, and then we're going to begin writing code immediately. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Mm -hmm.